So this deck was a build around submission to try and put the Wandering Emperor into something. I'd like to start this deck deck by saying there are tons of different shells this card can go into. It can be a combat trick, it can put pressure onto the board, it could be a removal spell, an instant speed. It just does a lot in a lot of different ways. And this is by no means what I think the best shell is. I just like playing kind of mid-rangey decks. And I think Lion Sash and Bankbuster here are some of the better cards in the new set that I wanted to try out that support kind of mid-rangey decks. So uh, we're gonna start here and uh, we'll see where, uh, where we end up at, huh? So we've got things that generate card advantage like Wedding Announcement. We've got Starheim Unleashed. And Amarius calls as ways to generate some extra tokens. We got some chariots to copy some of the tokens we're going to be making. So let's play some matches of magic and see how this feels. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to tell exactly, okay, this It's definitely less aggressive than Copter, right? It's for the follow Dan Doom. The sash here. Dear Magic Arena, I can't legally activate this. Stop giving me priority. Baby pet cat meow I've ever heard. Not looking great in multiples here. Thought that was my cat for a second. That's kind of lame. Yup. Send in the bank buster chip. surprised if this card doesn't end up feeling playable. It's 
It's a, it's a big one. Strike fast and strike hard. Hopefully, these wedding announcements mean we're just going to go long enough to win this game. Or go wide enough to win this game. Taking our card that gains them life as their first hit here is a good start towards us losing. Feel the energy of battle, then guide it like water. I think I'm supposed to play the Florhedron as a blocker. This plays off the top of my deck, Brano. So it still generates them a lot of card advantage every turn here. I am almost sad. It's a quality animation. They know that I just drew two lands because Xanthar is letting them see the top cards of our deck. It's pretty peak magic. Opponent plays two decent spells off the top of our deck and then we draw two lands. Yes, we'll do this. We've got the edge in this fight. This can crew off of here. I assume they just jump block. Maybe I'm supposed to attack with the uh, layer of the Hydra as well. So, if we take the innkeeper here, when this dies, we get the 2-2. So, we've got that going for us. Buster off our deck doesn't accomplish much for them. They're looking for creatures to be blocking here. Remember your training. Hmm. 
Now, the dedicated deck building sessions uh, didn't do particularly well in terms of metric substantial, so I'm kind of just building decks as we go today. Man, are we going to beat this Xanthar? It's starting to feel like it, huh? Oh, that's a good shout. I forgot the commander was there. The emperor was there. You're right. We could, we could have taken the emperor. I don't know. I kind of wanted to cut their life gain off. But I guess this also is potentially life gain down the line. Are they dead to layer the Hydra? They are, right? Yeah. Weird game. All right, well, Valorous Stance is obviously great. Good, good luck in the rest of your lettering today, Closet Pan. They're, they're a sub. They probably were just, just not happy with their build. Bank Buster seemed a little awkward in their deck. I don't, I don't know if Bank Buster's good. I know we just loaded four of them up in here, but this is our first time playing with it. It's going to take a, take a little bit of getting used to the play better and see if it feels powerful enough or not. It, it seemed, honestly, Bank Buster seemed clunky on both sides of that match. Like, both both ours and theirs seemed less than, less than great. A little bit better on our side, maybe, because we had the... Uh, We had the aggressive slant. Uh, it's not Mind Stone. It's more like Maze Mind Tome is the better comparison. Mind Stone's a ramp, a ramp spell. Maze Mind, Maze Mind Tome is one where you tap two to draw a card. Maze Mind Mech. I like that one. Uh, the fact that it can't both crew and draw in the same turn feels a little clunky to me. Hope to draw an untapped land for this. Nice. And then next turn we can Starheim and copy the Angel Token with Chariot. All right, untapped land again. Have to settle for two angels instead of three chip. Travis Doom. Mm, you know what? I'm probably supposed to attack with everything here. Because if they want to not block the ch if they want to trade with the chariot, they have to take four. Oh, and I'd have drawn a card, right? Yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely supposed to attack with everything there. I'd rather draw a card than have a 2-2, two -two, he says before getting Meat Hook Massacred. Doesn't Chariot crew for two in Alchemy? Yeah, the Angel wasn't doing anything, though. I just have an extra card in my hand. We might still kill them because five fives, but I definitely, definitely messed up.
I started this fight, but I'm going to end it. May your blade strike true. Pump the angel up because doesn't that a power word kill? Strike also, ideally, want to try and keep it out of Meat Hook Massacre range. They're so smart and thin. So seven months, Kabufu. Appreciate it. There's no B in there, Kabufu. I'm gonna call you Maniac. Thanks for the seven months, Maniac. Angel is lethal in the air next turn. Sweet. <sighs> Interesting. They get priority when you cast so if they have instant speed removal, you don't get attacked. That's not true. You can respond to their removal with your activation. Come on, chat. Sladness, thank you for the entire year. Wouldn't be able to be here without folks like you. Thanks for keeping me around. Welcome back. Cheeky Valorous stance. Let's do it. The sand's gonna draw running lands. It's gonna be excellent. We're gonna curve foretell wedding announcement. Sherry at red in seven on two, three, four, five. And the hand's gonna rock their world. That's fine. We got we got two more draws before we need the land ship. <laughs> I'm gonna. I gotta hit my land on time, says increasingly nervous man for the third time this week. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a third land on turn three deck. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! For what it's worth, Chat, we're a 27 land deck. And that's not not counting Innkeeper as a land. Our deck has 27 lands in it. I got you, Kek. Maybe their hand is all lands, chip. I mean, this card's literally just a 6-6, six, six, right? With ward? It doesn't generate card advantage at all? Just kind of chills? Thank you. 
27 lands later, the Jeff Hoagland story. I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. Uh, they, they've been reasonable, look, Kurt. This could be a turn three chariot, turn four cast Starheim chariot, copy Starheim token. He says before his tangled Florahedron dies and he never draws a third land. Oh my God. Oh my God. What doing it? What doing it? It's so exciting, and I just can't hide it. Do 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 do. A massacre in my future. Just a city stalker connoisseur. So my second Starheim here is insane, man. That's why if they want to kill the chariot, they take five. Yeah, yeah, Starheim, Starheim into, uh, Chariot into Starheim seems real good. I might, I might put the fourth Chariot back in. <sighs> and I guess. I guess. Starheim, we haven't treat the angels at home. Nah, they're very different. Yeah, chariot, chariot wasn't a nerf. It was a side grade. Ooh, a green white mirror, huh? I'm in shambles over here, chat. They're swarming. We've been nut drawn, chat. We've been, we've been nutron. All right, 
You want a day one hot take chat? I won't take a card, a deck with this card in it for a $50 donation. It needs to be 100 because this card is awful and I'm not crafting them unless you pay me money to craft them. Because I know every time we see a start like this, people are like, okay, so when are we going to play their deck? It's like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spending $18 a wild card to craft this card. We only, we only opened one of them. I ain't doing it. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes they have their best start and you got gut and that's okay. It's a very, it's a very impressive start. The game, game's not over quite yet, but we're definitely behind here. Yeah, I think this, this card looks like a gas brawl card. I would rather Bank Buster die here than Chariot die. So I'm going to have the Cadillac drive the Bank Buster and then have the Bank Buster block the tree. of battle then guide it like water remember your training Wandering. The other thing about this card is, like, look at how many basics they have to play to make this card good, right? Like, look at my two-color mana base and look at how few basics I have because of how good the utility lands are in this format. Mamad, thank you for the 29 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. I'm gonna get rid of their reach creature here, I think. Are we on track to win this game? We might be on track to win this game, actually. We're kind of ahead. Four for angels are cracked. So, Circle of Confinement, Skyclave. I think I'm cutting these Bank Busters. I might cut them out of the deck altogether after this match. I've been kind of whelmed by them. Our other, our other cards up here have been better. Sash, Sash has felt a little slow and bad, too. There's a, there's a real chance the type of gameplay where Sash is right... Um, where Sash is good, just doesn't really exist in this format. It's probably a sweet historic card. I want to play this in like red, white, mid region historic. Star I'm Star I'm plus Chariot is a is a banger one too. This felt really good here.
Well, Lear, Lear is nerfed in this format, right? Something, something worth noting. Oh yeah, this card's great. I wonder what they're ramping into. This is another ramp card here. They get to discard this land and then put it into play. Mono White getting some technology. They sniffed it. They sniffed it out, champ. They found. They found the line. This is this is the old four mana no plays in this format now. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Just just unlucky. Can't do anything. Nothing to see here, friends. That was a really slick transformation. I like it. I'm into it. That <laughs> sounds good, right now. Still damage of blocking creatures too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a land. the the white the white one the white land is definitely a cut above the rest of that cycle. It's very strong. The Wanderer might be a good card for a green white co collected company deck. Twitch chat and suggesting adding cards that Collected Company can't hit to Collected Company decks. Name a more iconic duo. Have we, have we considered playing this card that our Collected Companies can't hit? If not, why not? Stop it. Get some help. We want another Azika's Chariot. Yeah, like three slots here. I might just want another land in here, honestly. Can I, I kind of just want to like slide another Seat of the Empire in. Card's pretty good. And I've got two slots here. It could just be like Ren and Seven because Tree Folk with Ren and Seven is like still pretty good with Chariot when we don't have Starheim Unleashed.
At no point have I ever said all of the people that aren't subbed to my channel are idiots. There are plenty of wonderful people that watch my stuff that just can't afford to support, and I still appreciate them. When I turn on sub mode, it just means the signal to noise ratio is too high. People, people are far less willing to be obnoxious when there's a small pay barrier for them to be obnoxious first. Most people, most people don't want it bad enough to drop a fiver to be obnoxious. What's the, what's the, the transit, the property? Not all non-sub people are idiots, but most idiots are not subbed. <laughs> That one. Let's throw a couple of runs in the main deck for now. Big wine. Thank you for the 51 months. Welcome back. And Frost Guardian. Thanks for the year and a half. Happy Thursday. I'll be in the Runeterra early access thing next week, Hobbit. So we'll get to we'll get to play with some deck ideas on on Tuesday on stream next week. I think we're gonna do Runeterra Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week is my plan because Horizon Horizon Zero Dawn comes out comes out on uh, Friday. I didn't just say you're an idiot because you're not a sub, but I will say you are an idiot because you didn't understand the simple property I just described. So no, but also yes. Thanks for the sub gift, KenX. <laughs> Being, being able to listen is cracked. Wandering Emperor uh, low-key synergizes with uh, Lion Sash, huh? What? I don't understand. The two costs is paid. You draw three cards. If one creates two treasures, then scries two. Okay, so I'm getting treasures and I'm scrying? I'm kind of confused. So they, they drew three. So the student cost was paid, they draw three, I get two treasures, scry two. They, they drew three, right? Is that what I'm understanding? My people must contest. Strike fast and strike hard. Think I want to just start plussing this up. It's a little bit worse into like a destroy target planeswalker, but I don't want to like go wide and get meat hooked. I mean, in terms of value, what they did was good value. They spent a card to draw three cards and let me scry and get this. So they, they actually traded tempo for value is what they did there. I have got new moves to teach you. Oh, yeah, they're probably on Divine Purge as their sweeper, huh? 
That's a good, it's a good thought. So I guess this doesn't really matter. I'm gonna equip to play around Meat Hook. I guess if I put it on Skyclave, that's better. Equipping also plays around Day of Judgment a little bit. And Doom Scars now. They get to kill my stuff, but I keep the other Lion Sash. I still have much to learn. Yeah, recon reconfigure letting you play around sweepers like that. Feels feels good. Especially on this card where like the bulk of the power stays with it when you reconfigure it. I mean, they might have known what was going to happen there to their token, but they just wanted to force me to spend my turn spending my mana. Like trading, trading their token for tempo. Doesn't seem unreasonable. Depending on what the context of their hand is, right? Like they've got, they've got a ton of cards in their hand. I'd be surprised if they don't, if they need more card advantage. Yeah, I think I think we're attacking and then we'll slide the sash over. There's no reason to equip before jamming chat. This is still just a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm actually kind of glad um, we're getting to uh, see this in a control matchup because this felt a little medium in the creature matchups, but getting to see some of the kind of grind and be able to like save itself around these sweepers is uh, there's some really nice interaction slash counterplay here. They just draw six cards. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Magician, thanks for the two thirds of a year. We'll shoot. Uh, yeah, there's some card, it's like a thousand hands or something like that that can block, like, 
There's like a, I think it's hundred handed one can block up to a hundred creatures. There's a couple, there's a couple of cards that block multi, multiple things. Yeah, there's a, there's a few. I'm pretty sure there is, there is one that's explicitly, it has to do with blocking a hundred things. Yeah, hundred handed one can block an additional 99 creatures each combat step. Excuse me? You drew six cards and this was your best play? Oh no! Fuck this card, Chet. Fuck this card specifically. Like it's actually kind of unreal how how offensive why why does it tag artifacts why why does it hit artifacts i don't i don't understand what what were they doing with their design that they needed this to hit artifacts too The Lion Sash reconfigure for leave. I don't know what you think this card does or how much mana it costs, but I would encourage you to read it. The green white decks felt okay, Bacon. Creature deck still infuriating to play into control, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, this is an interaction that wouldn't work in standard, right? You know, talking about how Chariot's not a nerf, it's a side greed in alchemy. This would not be able to come down and crew this in standard. Of course, if this was standard, we also wouldn't have been Divine Purge, so. Yeah, there also, there also aren't any permanents in graveyards. Hey, maybe they're dead. Maybe the five, maybe none of the five cards in their hand stop us from playing a creature or interact with the board. Maybe they're all blanks and this chariot's about to be lethal. With the land drawn, I should have fired up the creature land, right? I was I was counting lethal this way before I drew the land, but with the with the land drawn, uh, this is worse into a removal spell for sure. Yep, yep, yep. And just like, look at these cards, right? Like these cards might as well have been destroyed because they're never going to be relevant before this game. Like they're they're actually just impossible for them to be relevant with their mana costs and coming into play tapped. And they so they just got to play a three mana exile all artifacts and creatures with no downside. Sorry, two mana exile all artifacts and creatures with no downside.
Yeah, and like, I don't even get to like, use Lion Sash on anything, right? Like, See you later. and this is just gaining two every time they go up, right? So this game is done. Redain, Redain used to be a card that you could play in these control, it's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna skip this match. I'm feeling very, it's very frustrating. There's no counterplay that's meaningful at all. Yeah. If the opponent's deck is popular, our deck's probably unplayable. Uh, skip the match and hope that that's not the case. Redain, Redain and Valorous Stance are tools white decks have in this. Redain, Valorous Stance, and Vehicles are tools you have to have counterplay against sweepers, and Divine Purge basically just flips off all of them. I have no desire to play against unnerfed Azekas Chariot and unnerfed Goldspan Dragon. The Wander Avatar does look sweet. The, the push towards designs like Divine Purge really solidify why mid-range decks struggle to exist in a post-fire design world. Because a card like Divine Purge really encompasses taking a shit on everything mid-range decks would normally do to be competitive against control. Like, all right, well, how do you, you play things like, like a card like Lion Sash should normally be a, a design and an effect that's super powerful and fantastic into a control shell that just doesn't, just, just doesn't do anything now because of Divine Purge. They have inscription chat. Cards like Guardian of Faith are not good, and they're not good into things like Divine Purge because your decks can't afford to be holding up three mana constantly. Because if you're not playing to the board, you're also going to lose the game. An effect like Guardian of Faith is generally a win more style card. If you can afford to be holding it up, you probably don't need it to begin with. you've been subbed to this stream for 13 months. What part of your time watching here makes you think we've been keeping track of our record with decks? And then a follow-up question. 
what part of what you've learned while watching here makes you think that our record is relevant, even if we were keeping track of it? Chat, if your statistical sample size is like less than three figures, three digits, ignore it. And even if it's three digits, if there's enough variables, you should probably still ignore it. Wedding announcement seems slow and bad here. I think we're kind of boarding into a uh, just kind of like kill all the things deck. It's like bring in circles and stances and portable holes. Trim these wrens, win the game with this. We leave in some Rens and trim some innkeepers. You can see that. Hey, Adam Mart, thanks for the half year. I appreciate it. Welcome back. You recommend getting back into magic with this new set? I haven't been playing since Innistrad the Midnight Hunt. I'm going to be honest, Flame Boy, I don't know yet. I think this latest set release has some of the most interesting and fantastic card designs Wizards has possibly ever done in a standard set. Or me design perspective, they knocked it out of the park. How are all of those interesting designs going to play in the existing constructed formats? Is something we gotta take a little bit of time to figure out. We have our really strong start here. We have Chariot on three into Starheim Unleashed, Crew, Copy, and Angel on four. So this is, this is kind of our deck's nut draw. To the crux of your question, how has our deck been feeling? We felt very reasonable against everything that isn't divine purge control. We actually have a lot of a lot of resiliency into even Meat Hook Massacre, which is nice. Excuse me? Fights target zombie or destroys an artifact. That's rude. The audacity of this opponent to interact with us, chat. And they didn't they know I didn't they understand I was trying to nut draw them here? We're trying, we're trying to do stuff over here, opponent. The Jeskai deck was really fun, eh? Felt very cohesive. And a reasonable game plan that it was able to execute consistently. Two mana, two mana magma opus is great. Oh, we brawling, fam. The new lands are excellent. Probably probably somewhere between one to three ofs in most decks in their colors.
You know, maybe I'm just supposed to stance this in response. can turn into a 4-4, but Brutal Cathar cleans that up nicely. Technically ahead here by a small bit, but I definitely go either way depending on how hot the top of their deck is. Run to six here. If I oh this token enters tapped right, yeah I forgot I forgot the token enters tapped. I appreciate the shout. Get my tree folk chat. My tree folk is huge. I'm intentionally not attacking with these so I don't want to die to another haste creature. Uh, the layer could only animate as a 1-1 one, one there, and if they played another 4-4, four, four, I'd rather trade my 2-2-2s two, two, for their 4-4. Four, four. Nah, the Emperor just kind of felt like a good playable card. Doesn't seem cracked by any means, but has a lot of nice flexibility. We've used we've used all three modes on the Emperor, which is nice. Playing, playing the Emperor in this shell has definitely convinced me that I want to play it in other shells as well. Oh, this is the same mono green opponent. Dead game. It's a good draw. I think this is a make a 4-4 four, four on turn 3 angle, huh? I guess that's bad into Blizzard Brawl, but all of our plays are bad into Blizzard Brawl.
Well, we're on the draw against Blizzard Brawl. Need I say more? Need I, need I say more? Not really much to summarize or learn from there. Like we did in the previous one. Day sale. Thanks for the 44 months. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, we beat a Sultai Meat Hook deck. We've not played against the mono black slash black white build, but we beat a, we beat a Sultai variation. There might be something to this whole uh, being on the play thing, yet. It seems, it seems strong. I'm gonna spend some more time testing it today. De desperately hope Wizards of the Coast spend some time trying different things with giving the person on the draw more benefit. Yeah, this card threatening to be a Doom Scar to match up like this when deck lists are closed. Seems sweet. He has foiled our plans. Rats foiled again. Supposed to play defense here. Building new decks now defaults to alchemy instead of asking you to select a format. That's because it's the magic arena format of the future. Do you want to block the 4 3 since you have a 4 4? No, they play cards like Rangers, Guile. So I'd rather block the one that can trample, I think. <sighs> I'd have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for these meddling blizzard brawls. Like seven to transform. Hey, brawl me some more, daddy. Brawl me some more. Cynicalizer, thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, 
Going on, Depo. So thanks for coming back to re up. Appreciate it. I don't think that's beatable, huh? We're hitting the shiny button in dark. Sounds good, video OS. Yeah. Alright, I guess this is enough for this deck for this session. Thanks for the five months, Depos. Appreciate it when you remember. The Just Kai deck felt fine. It's playing a bunch of good cards. If you like the look of it, I think it's a fun grift. This deck, however, I think I'm going to recommend passing on. I titled this deck Green White Mid Range Optimistically. And I'm 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 gonna I wanna just level with you, chat. I don't I don't think any I would be surprised if there is anything in Kamigawa that makes mid-range decks playable in alchemy until we have a fundamental shift in the cards that are good in this format. The the Blizzard Brawl Meat Hook Divine Purge Squeeze just pushes out anything kind of mid-rangey in a way that doesn't doesn't feel great. It feels like you just get hammered on too too many sides and you just don't don't have a very good time. This deck didn't feel quite consistently aggressive enough to get under the control decks and that that last matchup against the green deck where they just like have brawls and their things are bigger. Just I think that's probably about average case there and I think we got to get a little bit lucky to win that one. So, you know, this doesn't doesn't seem to be like something I would recommend giving a try to.